uh, discuss with you guys how much I love film as film is an art. And we've been trying for years to bring filmmaking here to Indianapolis, um, as well as uh, share stories here about Indianapolis, but also see all the wonderful things here in Indianapolis. We have, we have beautiful cities, we have beautiful landscapes, we have uh, water, we have all kinds of things that, that would make for wonderful storytelling. Um, so we're trying to get the word out about this as being an art and what we love about film. Um, we have wonderful sponsors like the Indie Film Fest, who then gets the word out that this thing exists. They're also uh, our financial um, umbrella for, so we couldn't process this grant, I couldn't do this grant if it wasn't for a not-for-profit organization to help me out with that. Um, and then we have our wonderful library, our beautifully restored, beautiful, beautiful library. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how wonderful that library is here in another slide, but I have to talk uh, about what the broad library can help us, help filmmakers and other people bring to us. IFN uh, is our Indiana Filmmakers Network. Those are all those people who love to make films and want to talk about films. And then we get into the nitty gritty about what we're, who we've uh, been working with. We've got, uh, uh, obviously, Rupert, that's a little Rupert icon, he looks like a little Mario guy. Um, we've got uh, Ted's brain, who is in the middle, that's his noggin, who helps us with all this AD. He's quite kind, he comes back around, he helps me with so many projects for the past 20 years. He's the best human. We also have a wonderful camera shop. Uh, we shot uh, our film with some amazing optics from them. They donated these beautiful lenses, and Amoto's like, I need good lenses, and I'm like, oh, get you good lenses. And, um, but everything costs money. So um, uh, Robert said, you know, we've, we like what you're doing, James, we wanna help you out, and they donated these gorgeous Sony lenses that had beautiful optics, and um, so we love Robert, so this is what we love Robert. And then Wizard of the World, we had a big thing yesterday, our beautiful Melody Ann. That woman on the sign, what's her name? Melody. <coughs> Just to let you know, that's <laughs> Melody, that right? That's Melody. Um, but uh, they let us shoot in their bar for like three days and talk about a wonderful place with a wonderful patina. It's just, it's, it's just, it's got, just, it's a, it's a character in itself, this beautiful location. And then we got all the people that we've uh, met along the way with this journey uh, of filmmaking about pinball. We have uh, the Indie Pinball uh, community that helped us find the right machine for our films. We have uh, tappers who uh, helped us celebrate pinball after the event and got people out of the library. Um, and we have our beautiful lady, Zan, who's going to be coming up here shortly, who will, um, I'm going to kind of hand the baton off to her uh, as she talks about charity work, uh, because she is a charity auctioneer and wonderful person. We have Tilt Muses, who's sponsored the party. And then the, the captain in Captain Crazy is Amoto. Um, so that is her, her bit. So anyway, going through all of them, because they're all very special. So, and I wanted to kind of let you know why they're really cool people. Um, then we thank the mayor, and we thank all these people who, who bring all this stuff together for us. We have wonderful people at the library, we have wonderful people at the, the, um, uh, the, at the film festival. We have my wife, who is also really wonderful, and she's not even here, so wherever she is. Um, and we have my wonderful film collaborator, Jim Mitchell, who has been working with me since high school. Like we met at North Central High School. He's gone off and done amazing things. But we've always put storytelling lies. And he's taken insane ideas out of my head and then helped me sculpt them into really good stories. And he's a wonderful collaborator, and we hope to continue that on. Last and most wonderful people that you love is Randy, who is right there. He is here to make you look good. So please take advantage of Randy. If you have a friend or somebody here that you would like a picture with, we have a, a backdrop banner where, where you're going to definitely look beautiful because it'll be beautifully sculpted and light. Uh, or if you just want quick instantaneous stuff. But he's uh, agreed to put all of this online for social media so that then you can take them use them for your little social stuff. If you want a book cover of that amazing photograph that he's taken, by the way, he's shooting about 6,000 photographs, and we'll probably edit it down to like three, by the way. But we'll definitely try to get one of each one of you guys. Um, but uh, everybody's gonna look good. Everybody's gonna have a nice smile. Everybody's gonna look charming. 
We do not, that's the whole goal of having Randy around. So use him. If you need a picture, use him. Um, at the same time, if you decide to use it as your book cover on your back, please contact him. <laughs> He'll have the high res version, plus you can negotiate from there. Um, but, all right, filmmaking, digital media labs. If you walk down the hallway here, there is an amazing, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a maker space, but there is a space down the hallway that has uh, these amazing computers and Macintosh and helpers. Uh, all the programs that have cost me a gazillion dollars <laughs> over the years, to that, they have it all there. They have everything there. They have a TV studio, they have 3D printing, and they teach you how to use all these wonderful tools and have people in to talk about it. So um, it's, a, it's a really amazing space. Uh, it was not connected to a library, but as the library kind of expanded and grew with this, this, new, this new update that they've done to the library that has brought us this wonderful room, um, they've also taken that, that, that maker space that was offsite, brought it back in, brought it into the community. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're interested in filmmaking and, and you want to dabble and you want to experiment with a program, uh, they probably have it at the Digital Media Lab. So I'm just saying, you could do blogs, you could do all kinds of stuff down there. And then you're like, I don't know how to use this stuff. You could take a little class or you could walk into the library and get a book on it. <laughs> it's the lab books here. Um, but uh, they also have for me here, which I still love, is that they have a wonderful collection of films that you, you cannot find on streaming. They have you know, the entire Criterion collection here. They have all these wonderful things uh, that, that I've drawn inspiration from from multiple, multiple years. And I can revisit them and enjoy them. And um, yeah, there's, there's something really special about your public library. We all need to support libraries because there are special places, and, and not every library has all the amazing resources that this library has, but uh, you can connect into this library through, there's like a, a way where you can get a super pass that will take, let you go to all the Indiana libraries, so you can get access to, if they don't have a film in one place, to a film in another place and not other resources. Um, so check into your local library. And uh, especially if you're a poorer filmmaker who doesn't have this kind of access, libraries are an amazing place for us, so I love my library. Um, so that's about it for all the spiel. Um, I also want to um, embrace, well, I'll talk a little bit more about um, Emoto and, and why the Film Forum um, has embraced, well, let's get to it right now, and I'll just let them talk, you know, I'll stop. Um, the Film Forum has always been here to bring in professionals from our community. I, all this stuff's in your program. The whole spiel's in the program about why we exist, the stuff that is part of our grants. But we're here to bring professional filmmakers in to learn from them, to make things, to process things. I always try to bring work in to share with people during the Film Forum. I always try to bring uh, a perspective in that's different. It's always changing every year. Um, we've done everything from um, stop motion animation to how to shoot on your cell phone. We've been streaming live during, um, during, oh, by the way, there's my beautiful red-headed lady. And by the way, that's not, that's not Melody, by the way. That is not a picture of her on the neon sign. That is just, that's just the lady that I love. So, um, and, and she puts up with a lot of this stuff, obviously, so that's what we have to, we have to love. Um, but back to how cool women are in filmmaking. Uh, it's always, uh, filmmaking's a, a, a male kind of dominated um, profession. And um, at the same time, you know, women have a voice, women have beautiful uh, things to say. And so we've always been an advocate to supporting women and uh, minority women in, in, our, in what I'm trying to do here at the Film Forum. We're here to share all voices, not just one particular kind of voice. So I'm always looking to, to connect with uh, other filmmakers with other voices, and uh, Moto has an amazing voice and an amazing passion for what she does. So, uh, you know, she, and she you know, was, was, was willing to come here and share her voice and her passion uh, about pinball and about all these things. Um, she's more than just uh, uh, a pinball player and a, and a viral media lady. She also makes wonderful films and we've created some really amazing things together. So I hope 
that goes on and that we can create even more films with different stories here. So uh, that, you know, say hi to Moto. Now, I'm going to kind of turn this over to her. We have a little uh, video uh, Moto and I had put together when we were doing a project called um, The Big Picture Pinball Show. So for the past two seasons, two years, we've interviewed everybody we can find in the pinball community who's made films about pinball. And that's been a lot of documentary. That's been a lot of um, uh, short films or blogging people. Um, we've met people who've built pinball machines behind the scenes for films. We've interviewed Roger Sharp, who has a documentary kind of, uh, it's not really a documentary, it's, it's about his life, but it's a, it's a docudrama, docudrama, thank you. Um, which is amazing, but I haven't seen that, so I can't comment to too much about it. But pinball's making a comeback, and um, if we can use pinball for good, um, it's always better for, to use anything for good versus evil, obviously. Um, so if pinball can be used for good and, and it can help people, that's our whole mission to talk about today. So I'm going to push this button. <laughs> this over to Omoto. Cool. Hello everybody. Thanks for joining us today and thank you to this awesome Rupert's Arcade team for joining yeah. us up here. We are so excited to learn more about what y'all do. Um, but first, let's just go down the line with Rupert. Uh, say who you are and what you do at the arcade. Uh, my name is Rupert Bonham. I don't do a whole lot but play the games at the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a play tester. I get to play. Uh, I am uh, Randy Bear. I help with the arcade. Uh, I met Rupert, I don't know, seven years ago or something. He said he wanted to start an arcade. I said, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> and he said, no, wait, hear me out. It's all for charity. And I said, let's do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice, Randy. Um, I'm Jeremiah Holt. I help fix the games and work in it when they need somebody to fill a position. Yeah. Awesome. It's important to have your techs around. And then we've got Reagan out in the audience Hi. that is the general manager of the Woo. arcade. Yes. She was mine. too shy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So you said seven years ago is when you said? Uh, we just had our fifth birthday. We talked about it for a while on April 1st, five years ago. So we're coming up on our sixth year. So easily we've been talking about it for seven. Oh, well, happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, the most important question right now is, what is Rupert's Arcade and what do y'all do? You know, we really, our arcade was created more because we had the space and I was looking for a way to help teach young men and women how to deal with the general public. We had the space uh, uh, coming available and I needed that last step in our mentoring program when you're teaching young men and women how to go to work, when you're teaching somebody that j your job will give you your freedom, will give you that respect in this world, will give you that, that sense of self-worth. Uh, it's a little hard trying to figure out where you want to be when you're that 20-something, 30-something year old kid and you've never really done anything. You might have worked some restaurant work, you might have done some labor, some day labor, some general labor. You might not have ever worked a legal job in your life. Um, we, as we get them working in our program, in our mentoring program, and that's another thing that Jeremiah and I do, are the vocational mentor sides that take them out and go to work. Teaching them how to deal with the general public as you've got them to that point where they're able to go to work every day. 
Okay, let's start building on some skills. Dealing with the public, having the guys first start out with just being the cleanup crew going in there. And I mean, we've started as young as some of our, you know, people in the audience cage right there. Uh, would come in with a rag and be cleaning machines for half an hour and then play games for half an hour and clean machines for half an hour. And play. We teach our mix. guys in our program also when we're needing some extra help, when we're needing some, some help keeping just, especially in the COVID time, keeping ourselves clean, let alone being able to, you know, deal with the public. But getting them in that situation where they start seeing and they're having to deal with people and having to, you know, just be around even the general public. And then you start teaching them how to deal with the conflicts. You know, somebody bumps you as you're doing, playing your best game ever in the world, and they just messed it up. Oh my gosh, it's easy to have problems in something like that, especially when we're encouraging kids to run the place. You know, I mean, not that we want to be babysitters, but we don't mind, well, I mean, I don't mind at all <laughs> when they drop kids off at the arcade and we can play. I, that's wonderful. Sometimes the employees, get, you know, because sometimes they can be a little hard and they might beat up on our beautiful machines. But that's when you also teach them. You teach them, yeah. But being able to use the arcade, that's really how it started was trying to create, and I, I you know, silly me thought it was actually going to make money right off the bat. It would help fund our reentry program that takes no city, state, federal funding, no government dollars. We spend no tax dollars. We just save tax dollars teaching young men and women how to go back and go to work, how to be okay, how to take care of themselves. I thought the arcade would create money and give us a path to teach, you know, social skills in that final step. Well, it's been a great path to teach social skills. And finally, after five years of running it, this team has got it to a point where it is actually paying its own bills, Yay, paying its own way and giving back every month to our program. That is absolutely I know, it's amazing. It's been amazing. After five years, we're an overnight success. Yes! <laughs> Hey, climb that mountain, uh, right? It's been great. And for the kids. So how did y'all get inspired? Like, what inspired you to, to do this? To take kids you don't even know under your wing and, and give them a chance? Oh, in our program, honestly, there are so many of us, you know, in our older years that remember we used to have second chance programs. We used to have mentoring programs and journeyman programs, apprenticeship programs, uh, second chance programs even in the detention center. Uh, when you get to a point where, you know, you start looking at people as a commodity and you start privatizing our jails and all, and I don't want to get into all that, but, you know, you start building our prisons too much. No, let's go the other way and yes. start bringing back the ability to teach our young men and women how to go back into the community and go to work. You know, years ago, and I met one of Randy's partners, Joey, out there that at the drive Skyline Drive-In. At the Skyline Drive-In, yeah. When on December 5th, that was seven years ago, that they were doing a fundraiser, the last bash of the drive-in yeah. on yep. December 5th, and they chose Rupert's Kids as their charity. That's when it all kind of started, and I realized that they, you guys were closing down the Skycade and everything for the winter, yep. and I thought, oh my gosh, we can't let these all just sit empty idle. <laughs> we got to create an arcade. That's, Save them. You know, and it, it, I didn't realize it would, it, it didn't, it, I remember how many quarters I pumped into those machines years ago. I mean, I, my gosh, I spent thousands of dollars a quarter at a time. <laughs> but, you know, anyway. It's been, it's, it's been a wonderful partnership, and really, it came from just us all getting together and seeing the need in the community to help generate the funding that our government is not going to create for us. We are not going to spend our tax dollars trying to keep our people down. We're going to spend our time and our money empowering each other and teaching ourselves and our children how to do better. I love it. It's been great. And being able to teach the, the, the younger generation the pinball machines, and you know, 
You know, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, yeah. Asteroids, I love them too. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the thing that was cool is, no offense, when, when he and I met, I'd never seen Survivor. I had no idea who <laughs> this person was. And he came up and said, I understand you help with the arcade out here. And I was like, I have no idea who this person is. He said he wanted to start an arcade. And I, then I, after a while, we got to know each other. But the thing that really impacted me is one day we were together and, and I came into the arcade one night. I was going to work on some machines. You were in the back and you had a calculator and papers all over the place. And I'm like, what on earth is he doing? And, and you told me you were teaching one of the people you were mentoring how to do their taxes. Yeah, and whenever I saw important. that and I saw <laughs> teaching people life skills, I was like, okay, I was pretty on board with this before, but really I just wanted another place that I could store some really cool machines. <laughs> and But then I was like, no, I see what it does. And I mean, it was incredible, you know, and, and we've become friends. And one of my best friends in the world is someone, is Jeremiah, who yeah. is in, uh, who is in the mentoring program, and it's just, it's been incredible. It's been incredible to see what impact we're making. And how did that start? So you were mentoring kids long before the arcade idea. Right. So tell me a little bit how you got into that and you know, why. Years ago, we have decades of running a empowerment program. As our society really created the three strikes and you're out, the zero tolerance, the you know, then getting to the no child left behind. They all sound wonderful. They create more problems, you know, especially when we finally got to the no child left behind, we started really just funneling kids into the detention center. We're not leaving you behind anymore. We're not kicking you out of school anymore. We're taking you right to juvie. Um, the program really created itself back in the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, wow. uh, as we incorporated our first time as Kids Hope, Kids Helping Other People Exist. Uh, some wonderful person out there bought, after I went to Survivor, bought my name and our company's name, so we dissolved and incorporated Rupert's Kids. Nice. Years ago, we opened up our 12-bed facility three years ago, January 2020, with no city, state, federal funding. Our first person to move in the place yeah. Our first person, I should say, our first person to move into place is Jeremiah sitting right yeah. there. He was our first, he was in our mentoring program, in our work program as a participant and moved in. He has now became a vocational mentor for the last two years and has been the best and the longest running mentor I've ever had in 30 years of running our program. We've hired college degreed mentors. We've hired mentors off the street. People don't last honestly in it because it's, tough. it's a tough job. Sure. You don't get the thank yous, you know? It's, it's like running the R gate and watching them beat the heck out of your machines and then they, they get mad at you because they don't work anymore and you, you just yep. want to say, you know, come on, if you would take care of yourself. So you get frustrated and you don't want them to touch your machines anymore and you quit. <laughs> well, no, we don't quit. We've kept going. Um, that's what Jeremiah is doing, really. I've, I am so impressed with what is happening. The arcade has turned him into a technician on these pinball machines. He yeah. was not before. He was. He showed me the other day. I'm walking through the arcade. I, like I say, I get to push the buttons and play. You know, <laughs> you play like, test. Oh my gosh, we got a new Simpsons one. And, uh, and I realized, wait, this is the one that was sitting back in the shop, back in the garage at our community empowerment center for months that he was rebuilding. Nice. Um, no, of this it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Jeremiah, I want to hear from you now, since you are one of the first people to experience Rupert Kids Arcade. Like, what was that journey for you like? So, what brought me to, it's got to start with what brought me to Rupert's Absolutely. Kids. Absolutely. Um, a life of trouble and breaking the law. I mean, went to prison, come out, was on house arrest, and had to do community service. I got sent to Rupert's Kids. Um, been there ever since and I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but uh, 
and then that's when I got introduced to the arcade. I mean, I seen them as a kid a little bit. I, small town, we didn't have much, but then I've seen what the arcade does with people. I've seen families interact and stuff. Seen that people in the community did care about people that's been in trouble. That's what's changed my life. I mean, I never knew the community cared. You don't see that every day. But when you get in an environment like that, you see the community cares. People are coming in to support you for things. That, I mean, that gives you hope. You can't get that anywhere else. And that's what keeps me at Rupert's Kids. I, I want to keep giving that hope to everybody else. That's amazing. It is cool to be in the arcade and watch generations of family, two, three generations playing together. Grandparents teaching their grandchildren what pinball is, you know? Um, luckily, still, you know, able to whoop them on, you know, until they get good at it. Um, <laughs> that lasts till about age six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing that it gives us so many different avenues of uh, not just joy for ourselves, not just the ability to give that to others. I mean, we've created a space where you can have birthday parties in there. We've got families oh, that are nice. driving from Indianapolis. Yep. $50 an hour for a couple hours, you get a hundred bucks and you can have 40 people. 40 come people in. and all the machines are on free play. That includes what? the pinball machines, so. That's where my Unheard next birthday of. is gonna be. <laughs> you know, I, uh, be in, and we're still able to make money. Not a lot, but at least we're not having to spend. Um, we're giving back to our mentoring program, helping pay the bills for a 12-bed facility. You know, the washing and dryer never stops. The microwave, I started out with a few microwaves on the counter. We're down to one, one at a time. <laughs> um, Three refrigerators and two freezers, you know, 12, 12 people from, you know, our youngest, 22, 23, to, you know, we, we call it Rupert's Kids. Uh, some, of us, kids. some of We're us are kids. a little older than, you know, but, um, but 12 grown men eating, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of bills. That's a lot of stuff. Being able to have extra revenue come out of the arcade besides all the other. You know, I mean, bottom line is we've got to think about the dollars. Our program, to run our community empowerment center, to do our community outreach where we're working with not just the children, not just the seniors, but with, you know, multiple families, multiple generations, multiple facilities, with the better men and women shelters, with the uh, quarter million dollars a year. The arcade now is helping generate that. Beautiful. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know? So for all of us who haven't been to Rupert's Arcade, and we will all change that <laughs> at some point, I promise, can you uh, describe it for us visually? Like, I'm walking into the arcade. What do I see? What do I experience? So I'll, I'll give my <laughs> description because I was that guy back in the 70s that walked into the old pinball parlor with the hardwood floors and the line of pinball both up, down, both sides, and, you know, enough of a path to get through and a few people. Back in my day, it was a little smoky, and you couldn't even see the back. <laughs> sure. No smoking at Rupert's Kids Arcade, Yay! please. <laughs> no smoking. <laughs> I tried to have no sugar and no caffeine and no, you know, but we, there's sugar, there's candy, and there's soda. That helps generate the revenue. <laughs> yes. it does, sugar, it does. sugar, sugar, sugar. <laughs> Offer donations, you know, donations, but it is the old style pinball parlor. It really is. It's the old, uh, you walk in there, it's th literally Jeremiah and I and the guys in our work crew. I mean, my God, Jeremiah was for hours, for days, we were sanding this floor, bringing this old hardwood floor back that is literally 123 years old. The building was finished in 1899. It is a cool old pinball parlor. That's amazing. With a cool, neat little uh, uh, party er uh, uh, sitting area in the back. So, you know, if you are having your birthday parties, you will even reserve little tables for you to have a little space. Um, you know, indoor plumbing and everything. Like I say, 1999, <laughs> but, you know, we have the modern facilities. That's good. That's good. But Did it, they not have it when you started? 
Uh. <laughs> you gotta go out back, <laughs> dig a hole. Then it went out back. <laughs> no, not anymore. Um, no, it's it's a cool old pinball parlor. So you gotta come out. And if you have, if you you got no reasons because everybody here should be taken. I don't want to bring We're any coming. of those We're free coming. passes home. Put them in your pocket. Ooh, yeah, yes. free passes right over there. Yes. So do we want to take some questions from our audience sure. really quick? And then we're going to have to move on to our next segment. But sure. let's get some, some feedback from people out there. Did anybody have any questions for our guests? Any questions? I have a, I have a question. OK. <laughs> you are known for your tie-dye. Yeah. It is a <laughs> brand for you. Obviously, you have. Gentlemen with tie dye, is one. Of, do you teach tie dye as well as at the arcade as well? Do you tie dye no, your own tie dyes? No, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I even not wrapped yet. tulip tie dye for a while, and we had a few tie dye parties there that they did. You know, but if you know that could be a special request at a there birthday party where we yeah. do some tie dyeing too. Have a craft right. to go along with the pinball. Yes. <laughs> I think there's a few questions out there. I see let's, hands. let's raise I see a hand. And let's, uh, it's some cool let, tie dye and some stripes. Uh, let's, let's, we'll repeat the question too so we hear it on the right. microphones. See your question. Why do you guys well, have tie dye shirts? Comes? Well, I'll tell you where tie dye came from Why years ago. You see, I don't wear sleeves a lot. Even in the cold weather, I like, you know. Shows off the guns. Suns out, guns out. Um, I had a lot of white tank tops. That, you know, as I drink coffee and it gets in the beard and it dribbles down and you're working and you get some grease on, you get some stuff on it. My wife hated seeing because I would wear them all the time. It's White. to cover the dirt. Um, <laughs> she, she, she. That's one why day I, I went too. to work and I came home and every one of my tank tops was tie-dyed. <laughs> they all, all... Tie-dye hover, covers up all the coffee stains, all the blood stains, all the grease stains, all the dribble stains. It covers it all up. Tie-dye. Yes. Genius. Yes. <laughs> That's where tie-dye came from. Great You can question. dribble on it and it goes away. <laughs> awesome. Rupert, if we wanted to donate or help out to what y'all are doing, how do we get in touch with you? Uh, right now, it's uh, rupertskids.org is our website, Rupert's Kids Facebook. You can get on our arcade Facebook and go over to Rupert's Kids also. We have our 18th annual tuxes and tennies, mm -hmm. black tie, you know, with comfortable footwear. I kind of stole everybody's shoes and tied myself to that. Uh, Coming up on November 19th, it is our 18th annual. We have different events and our sixth birthday party on April Fools 2023. We're already getting started for that planning. Awesome. So, rubberskids.org, hit <laughs> so that donate button, please. <laughs> thank you all so much for joining uh, us. We really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Amazing work you're doing for this universe. Amazing. Thank you guys for coming out and sharing your story and your your pinball success over this past was it's, you said 18 years how long has Rupert been around? Our Rupert's Kids our mentoring yeah. program yeah. Our, was incorporated in '91 as Kids Hope, Kids Helping Other People Exist, and reincorporated in 2003. So Rupert has been helping people as as for decades. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your story, sharing your pinball. So next up, um, uh, our hostess here, Amoto, has been working on an amazing documentary. Last year, um, we had the uh, opportunity to uh, the last film forum. She shared uh, a clip of this film, but she was a juror of the um, of the film. But the uh, uh, the uh, Indie Film Fest, who was helping us 